Do you feel that? A flow of fresh air from the left must be an exit that way. Good. Let's get out of here. Wait, there's still the magic lamp. The magic what now? Lamp. The elf promised it to me in exchange for my help. And since his return here seems doubtful, I must retrieve it myself. If I can find it, that is. Will you help? Yeah, I'll help. Splendid. Come then. Gavella Glan. We're certain to find something here. Kira Metz had helped Geralt in his search for Ciri, so the Witcher decided to return the favor. The sorceress sought a magic lamp, which the mysterious elven mage had promised to give her. Since the object was nowhere in sight, our heroes drew the only possible conclusion, that it lay concealed somewhere in the underground passageways. Another damned riddle to me. Inscription here. Show me. Can you translate the inscription? I can decipher maybe a third, but that third doesn't make much sense. Give me a minute. I was never any good at the high variant of the Elder Speech. Hmm. All right. This might seem a bit literal. I'm afraid I can't replicate its sophisticated internal rhymes. Just translate it to make sense. Four guardians, four flames, standing proud in a line. The first to light his fire dared not march on the end. The second, by the first, played a woeful lament. The third kept close to his faithful beast. The fourth marched not beside the first, yet, like the second, played a tune. And thus they stood o'er their queen, who slept beneath flickering stars. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like a riddle, all right. All right. Let's see if we can solve this. like a charm. Wait. Something just happened. Mm -hmm. Behind that wall, a movement. Power should 
draw from it. It's humming. Place of power, it's gotta be. Whose grave is it? What do you think? No inscription, sadly. Hmm. Son of the gull. I didn't already know where she was buried. I guess this is Laura Doran's sepulchre. Perhaps it's a monument to her. Can't see the elves commemorating her this way. Heroin of a tragic legend to some, but most see her as a traitor to her race, who got her just desserts for marrying Kraken and Lord. Perhaps the elven mage is Lara's kin. It would explain why he's helping Siri. Possible. This what you're looking for? Uh huh. So what's it supposed to do? I have to activate it. Let's leave this place, shall we? Sage's Notes, Day 3275, Final Conclusions Regarding the Lamp. My experiences with the magic lamp unequivocally confirm that by using it, active centers of condensed spiritual energy can be coaxed into contact 
and can communicate a limited set of the being's last memories. Lara Doran's remains, however, emit entirely inert spiritual energy, despite the violent conditions of her death, which should have strengthened the desired tendency. Lara rem remains silent. <clears throat> At this point, further research on lamps enabling contact with the dead seem entirely useless for my purposes. You learned something about Siri in the end. Something important. Do you intend to venture into Crookback Bog? You must tell me about it afterwards. Don't know that I'll get the chance. Geralt, there are two types of men. Those who see opportunity and take advantage, and those who forge the opportunities themselves. I've always seen you as an example of the latter. Besides, I've a favor to ask you. So, visit me sometime? I'll stop by. You can be sure. In that case, I shall be waiting. See ya, Kira. Information found in the home of Hendrik, the Nilfgaardian agent, indicated Ciri had entered into conflict with some witch in Velen. At first, Geralt thought this witch was Kira Metz, but he later learned Hendrik had meant a different individual, one who dwelt in Crookback Bog. So the witcher ventured into the swamps, determined to find this bog-dwelling witch and ask her about Ciri. The ladies of the wood, the gods have abandoned us. The mighty of this earth care not for our fate. Only the ladies of the wood watch over Velen. In foul times, when plague and famine reap their harvest, we must beg the ladies for help. If they see fit, they will hear our pleas and knock back fortune's foul blows. This is how one begs help from the ladies. Find a child, young and innocent, and take it to Crookback Bog. Seek out the lady's shrine. Tis where the trail of treats begins. Set the child off on the trail, and it shall follow the sweet track and find the good ladies. The child will never want for anything again, for the ladies are kind and generous. Stand before their shrine, pronounce your supplication, and the good ladies will hear, for they see and hear all that takes place in their domain. If you made the offering as it must be done, your plea shall be heard.
This book looks oddly interesting. Let's read this as well. She who knows. Folks say they were four at first. The mother, she who knows, the lady of the wood, came here from a faraway land, and since she suffered terribly from loneliness, she made three daughters out of dirt and water. A long, long time ago, the mother was sole ruler of all of Velen. Her daughters brought her the people's requests and served as her voice. Each spring, sacrifices of grain, animals, and men were made to the Lady of the Wood on her special night. Yet as the years passed, the Lady of the Wood slipped deeper and deeper into madness. Her madness eventually spread over the land. Men took to abandoning their homes and setting out into the bog, where they became food for beasts. Before long, Velen was drowning in blood. The daughters saw their land nearing destruction and took it upon themselves to save it. When spring came once more, and with it the night of sacrifices, they killed their mother and buried her in the bog. Her blood watered the oak atop Ard Serban, and from then on the tree grew wholesome and hearty fruit for the people. As for the lady's immortal soul, it refused to leave its beloved land, and so the sisters imprisoned it. To this day it lies trapped beneath the whispering hillock where it thrashes about in powerless rage. Interesting.
winds howling. Doug went in the kitchen, stole a hunk of meat. Cook gave him a licking, strung him by his feet. Cooked and bled him empty, stripped his skin off clean. Laughed and said, how tasty, best sausage I have seen. Cook's a stupid killer, shouldn't have ate the pup. Now we're light a fire, gonna roast him up. One, two, three, the one to fetch the kindlings, thee! Interesting rhyme. Don't know you. Go away. I'm looking for the witches of Crookback Bog. You look like a witch yourself. The w witches of the bog. We can't go in the bog. Gran don't let us. When my brother Zemek went missing, Gran said it was because he went in the woods and got lost. Gran cried an awful lot after that. You could still come back. What are you doing out here alone? We's not alone. We's with Gran. But where did you all come from? We's orphans. All of you? There's a war. So there's orphans. Didn't know that. A young woman got lost in the swamp. She has ashen hair and a scar on her face. You kids see anyone like that? Ain't no lassies here. What am I? You're no lassie. Lassies got tits. They do. Heard an old man say once, when the army was here, he says, 
Item losses in the woods. These dazzling the soldiers with their tits. And it's torturing the poor lads. That's what he said. Listen, the girl I'm looking for, she's in trouble. I understand you might not want to help me, but you could try to help her. How do you know she was here? I heard she visited the witches in the swamp. But there's no witches here. There's only frogs. And snakes. And Johnny. What's this talk? What kind of jabbering is this, eh? No one allowed here. Just kids. My kids. They're allowed. But who are you? Wearing swords like a bandit. Who's Johnny? Johnny, Johnny ate a cat. Come the more in some furry shack. Watch your language. They tell tales and tales. Naught but tales. Are you one of the witches of the swamp? I hear Crookback Bog. Witch? Me? <laughs> Nay. I've no broom nor owl and not one wart on me nose. Got a pretty nose. See? Gwen's got a lovely beak. Oh, you darling girl. Our oh, kids are so sweet. You look after these kids? They're my grandchildren. Grand's good to us. Gonna be soup with scratchings for supper. Kids get lost in the woods. I miss them. Seen them in the woods? No one has. Just talking to the kids. Asked them if they'd seen a young woman. Oh, it was a lovely young woman. Wore a long, beautiful braid my mummy did up for me. Had dresses with flowers on them. Maybe you've seen her. Young, ashen hair. You're betrothed. Daughter, actually. Daughter? My dear, sweet little daughter. And her sister. Where are they now? Maybe they've come to some harm. A bit of help, please. A young, ashen-haired woman. Just need to know if you've seen her. What are you looking at, children? Wash your hands, we'll go catch crickets. Won't learn anything from you. Aye, cos I don't know nothing. That Johnny knows. He knows a lot. When I ask him something, he says, Wait, I'll scratch my arse and tell you. Ugly word. What you saying? To the hut. You'll stand in the corner. I'll make sure you do. You. Be gone. Be gone. Come in here. Not allowed in here. I just want to talk to the boy. Not allowed. It's not allowed. He won't talk to you anyway. Gran don't like you. And and Johnny's made up. And and strangers steal kids. Just got one question for you. Don't be asking no questions. You're a stranger. Not allowed to talk to strangers. Can we eat now? Suit with scratchings. You here? Says he's afraid of you. Stop scaring my kids. Oh. Why don't you want to talk about Johnny? One of you knows about him. The others must too. It's just him who's pals with Johnny. They pick mushrooms. And hunt snails. But Gran says Johnny's made up. Have any of you ever seen Johnny? Of course. Looks just like him. Then why do you say he's made up? Gran says so. And Gran knows lots. Does your Gran treat you right? She ever hurt you? Never. When we're bad, she cries. She's scared. Says strangers might take us. And we'll disappear. The boy who plays with Johnny, he must be brave. Not brave, just stupid. Sat his bare bum on an anthill once. But yeah, he plays with Johnny. He don't listen to Gran and goes in the woods, and then he's got to have a time out. 
and eat snails, yuck. The girl I mentioned is in danger. You gotta help me get your gran away from the hut so I can talk to Johnny's friend. Alright, but you gotta do something for us too. Play hide and seek. Gran never does. Says her feet hurt. Let's play. You hide, but if I find you, you have to help me talk to the boy who knows Johnny. He thinks he'll find us easy. Means he's never hid from the black ones. No looking, and you have to count out loud. All your fingers, toes, too. One, two, three, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Ready or not, here I come. There you are. Found me. See you. Come out. Found you. You can stop hiding. How'd you find me?
No one left hiding. You're a wizard, right? Gonna show us some tricks when we get to the cottage. No, we'll talk about your promise. Found you all. Now you gotta keep your word and help me talk to Johnny's friend. Why wouldn't we? Promised, didn't we? Gran! Gran! Bumblebee bit Yagna in the arse! Gran! Come! Don't be afraid. Don't know nothing. I won't hurt you. Where's Gran? She's busy. Why are you scared to talk? I'm not scared of nothing. You're all scared of something. Would have told me about Johnny otherwise. I'm worried about Johnny. He don't come round no more. Once, when we was mushroom picking, I saw his burrow, but Gran yelled at me, said not to talk to strangers, cause then kids go missing. She worries about Johnny too, though she says he's made up. Where are you and your friend's parents? Dad, some starved, others were killed, like mine. One day, he went out at dawn to look for berries in the woods. Still some around back then. When I was coming home, I heard the yells. Then, laughing, went up and hid in the bushes near the woods. My mum yelled, and the soldiers laughed. Leave my pot down by the barn door. Is it clean off? I then my mum. It's all right. That's enough. I just want to talk to Johnny. He could know more than you. Not gonna hurt him, right? Cause he's real. He's not made up. I'm not gonna hurt him. Johnny used to be boy. Cause Gran liked listening to his songs. When we was picking mushrooms, Johnny said he saw a girl with ashen hair in the swamp. Where can I find Johnny? There is a little meadow on the edge of the swamp. This strange tree grows there. Look around. You'll see him. Thank you. Gargoyles. 
it just me or is that gargoyle ogling us? Laurel, Lara Esteban, burglar from Loch Muin. Gargoyles are stone statues brought to life by magic in order to guard mages' laboratories and lairs from intruders. Their appearance alone has scared off more than one prospective burglar. Those who do not take fright at the sight of these horned and winged monstrosities usually die shortly thereafter, torn to shreds by stony claws. Golems. If want us to break through this wall, we're gonna need 20 sappers, 7 mules, and 100 weight of saltpeter, or one golem. Vilmer Brass, foreman at Mount Carbon. Golems are mindless matter brought to life by a spell. They obey their creator's orders without question. Their boundless strength, ability to withstand pain, endless patience, and the fact that they need not one jot of food or drink makes them the best servants or guards anyone could ask for. Once provoked, they will not tire of battle until they have either crushed their opponent or themselves crumbled into dust. Hounds of the Wild Hunt <clears throat> Baying at the heels of the wild hunt are its hounds, fierce beasts which follow it like dust clouds trailing after a comet. Hushed legends speak of them losing their way at times and descending from the night sky to earth, cold and death following in their wake. Essie Blackjack Davin Troberitz Born, or so some experts believe, of magic ice crystal, the hounds of the wild hunt race alongside their spectral masters. Like ravenous, feral dogs, they are capable only of mindlessly attacking whatever crosses their path. Water Hags Folks say water hags are drowners' wives. If that be true, take no wonder why they're such arnery bitches. Shemel of Dregsden some tales mention water hags and swamp bints masquerading as lost old women to lure travelers back to rickety shacks they built in the wetlands. In truth, only a blind man, or a sighted man blinded with drink, could mistake the rank sludge and rotting carrion of a water hag's den for a cozy cottage, and the hideous hag herself for an innocent grandmother. Their wrinkled, wart-covered bodies stand nearly two yards tall, with skin the color of a long-dead cadaver, and sneaking of, monk, of muck and fish. Bony gross two spans long stick out from their backs with hair like a tangle of seaweed and claws that would make a werewolf proud completing the picture. Night Wraiths. Night wraiths exude this immense sadness, this helpless wrath. I fear them, same as anyone, but most of all, I feel sorry for them. Aileen Altsbar, Elvin Schroberitz. Compared to other creatures of the night, catacans, nekurats, and werewolves, for example, night rays and their rarer cousins, dust wraiths, might not seem all that dangerous. After all, one might ask, how much harm could a pale, withered woman in a tattered dress do? The answer, quite a bit. Instead of finding out the hard way, avoid crossing fields and meadows at night at all costs. Jenny of the Woods. So that's to mean our Zula's the Wraith? Bulko, Alderman of Midcops. It is said true love's flame is never extinguished. This sad truth is the reason why Zula of Midcops, whom an early death had separated from her beloved, was unable to find peace in the next life, and instead returned to haunt her former environs as a night wraith. Fighting such an apparition is ex extremely difficult. A night wraith will form mirror images of herself to confuse her opponent and aid her in battle. She herself can take on immaterial form, rendering her invulnerable to blows. The best way to force her out of this state is to set a trap with the Yurden sign, then quickly follow up with Igni while she is caught. Most important of all, however, is this. Never attempt to fight one in the middle of the night, when the moon hangs high in the sky. This vengeful wraith might very well have killed every last inhabitant of the village had not a famous witcher, Geralt of Rivia, appeared in Velen and been in need of a bit of coin. Small footprint. Johnny's been through here.
tracks lead to a burrow. Wonder what's inside. Johnny? Don't be afraid. You're a bucka? A Luton? Ah, a godling. Not many of you left. I'm looking for a woman with ashen hair. Seen her? Tell me everything from the start. Where did you see her? What was she doing? It's important to me. Why not? You know the kids from the clearing well? Don't be afraid. Not gonna hurt anyone. This where you live? Cozy Burrow. Good location. Must know about everything that happens in the bog. Doesn't bother you having monsters for neighbors? What's wrong? Can't talk? Why? Lost your voice? Can I help you somehow? Want me to follow you? No choice, I guess. This the place? Let me look around. Something's on the ledge? Something that'll get you your voice back? Guess I gotta make this climb.
this bottle. Peter Piper picked Prince Proximo a pack of pickled peppers by the Pontar. <laughs> Done celebrating? My favorite words! Life without savoring the sound of surreptitious shenanigans is like licking snails through a clock. Thank you for this, noble whoever you are. Long be your life! Hang on a minute. I helped you, now you help me. Would you turn this beautiful act of altruism into a banal bartering of favors? How'd you lose your voice? One morning I awoke and opened my mouth for my usual bout of singing with the thrushes. Lo and behold, no sound escaped. I tried and tried, almost burst a blood vessel. Then I went to the village, cause word has it the new cunning woman works miracles. But people began crying out, a smudger, a smudger, and sick their dogs on me. Do I look like a smudger to you? Not a bit. Oh, I thought not. So it must be the crows doing. Who else would curse me? Blackbird friend of mine located my voice, but I was helpless to retrieve it. Couldn't ask a raven friend to just give you the bottle? Ravens serve the crows. They don't help no one. How do you lock someone's voice in a bottle? Just wondering. As am I, especially as mine's a voice to crown all voices. Sometimes it's like a forest brook. At others, like a roll of thunder. And let's be honest, I talk enough to fill three barrels or more. Somebody used some powerful magic on you, as a prank or just to be mean. I'm looking for a young, ashen-haired woman. See anyone like that? Did I ever? Remember it as if it were yesterday. Soon as I woke, I went to empty my bowels. My favorite part of the day. Defecating to the sunrise, downright glorious. Suddenly, heard a bang. So loud, it couldn't have been me. And that lass appeared, out of nowhere. Young, ashen-haired, just like you said. Wounded and panting to boot. She raced off towards the children's hut. Quick as if the crones were after her. I yelled some unpleasantries. She disturbed my morn. Sadly, I'd lost my voice, so I don't think she heard me. What do you know about the crones? They're as old as this forest. Cruel. Vindictive. Not to be crossed. What if someone does cross them? Might take his voice. Might take his life. Depends on their whim. They're nasty. Although, they care for this land and its folk in their own way. Supposedly, they always keep their word. But you must be careful what you ask for. Won't find them until they want to be found. See them until they want to be seen. But remember, they see and hear all that happens in the mire. I've been to the village in the swamp, met a woman who might have been a crone. Did she seem confused to you? Nuts, completely. Oof, so I'm not crazy. 
That's no crone. That's the granny who takes care of the orphans. Claims the kids made me up. Me. An orphanage in a swamp? What do you have against swamps? Lived here my whole life, and I heartily recommend it. She ran off toward the orphanage. Kids could know something, or the old woman who takes care of them. Oh, that old hag don't speak to strangers, and you're a stranger. Will she talk to you? I have spoken to her, but my ways. So be it. You helped me, and I'm no bore. Come with me. Eridan, the name of the King of the Wild Hunt, the identity of the Lord of Nightmares, uh, the being behind the frightful mask, this long remained unknown. Over time, however, scraps of information gradually coalesced into a full likeness of our foe, but did nothing to detract from the terror he inspired. The Wild Hunt was in truth an elite cavalry brigade from the world of the An-El, the Alder Folk, and was commanded by their ambitious and ruthless king, Eridan Briak Glass. He would travel via secret paths through the cold emptiness between his world from ours to capture victims and take them back to his homeland as slaves. The current object of his hunt was Cirilla, whose power he wanted to harness for his own uses. The only obstacle in his, w in his path, Geralt of Rivia. Gran. In times of war, one often encounters those who have suffered cruelty at the hands of fate. Geralt was thus not shocked to meet the woman who the children in the Velen swamps called Gran, though she seemed to have suffered manifold, unspecified ills. Whatever her woes, it was clear she cared for the war orphans in her charge with love and devotion. Johnny. When the children in the swamp clearing first told Geralt about Johnny, the Witcher had every reason to suppose no such person actually existed. It was difficult to imagine anyone living in such inhospitable surroundings without quickly becoming food for drowners or water hags. Geralt thus suspected Johnny was the figment of childish imaginations, an imaginary friend for lonely orphans. Long years of experience, however, told him not to ignore any possible lead, so he decided to search the nearby swampland for any additional signs of Johnny. It turned out the, orphan, the orphans were not lying. Johnny really did exist. He was not a human child, but a godling, one of a rare breed of creatures that can be found scattered about the continent's wildernesses. Unfortunately, Johnny had lost his voice in circumstances he obviously could not explain, and so neither could he provide much in the way of answers to Geralt's questions. Once Geralt had helped him regain his voice, however, he talked up a veritable storm, giving the lie to all the tales of, the, of these legendary beings' supposed shyness. Johnny also agreed to convince Gran to put Geralt in touch with the Ladies of the Wood. <clears throat> Kiramets. Geralt first met Kiramets when she literally dropped on top of him out of nowhere. During the infamous coup on Thaned Island, Kira was defenestrated and nearly landed right on the Witcher's head. The next time Geralt saw her in the swamps of Velen was shocking in a different way. The luxury-loving sorceress was the last person he expected to see in such a grim and barren place. Geralt later learned the reason for this, and Kira's fate gave him ample fodder for contemplating the cruel whimsies of the Wheel of Fortune. Once the esteemed advisor to the now late King Foltest, she had been chased out of Temeria when she lost that ruler's trust. Later she joined the Lodge of Sorceresses, which earned her the hatred of Redania's king and Nilfgaard's emperor alike. Because of this, she had gone deep undercover, posing as a cunning woman, a village witch of sorts, deep in the Velen boondocks. It was not at all difficult to tell that she despised every minute of this. The Mysterious Elf <clears throat> It turned out not only Geralt was looking for Cirilla, also on her trail, a mysterious elven mage. Like the Witcher, he had gone to Kira Metz to inquire after Ciri's whereabouts. During this conversation, he also revealed that he kept a hideout in the ruins near the village of Midcops. Geralt decided to follow up on this lead. Though he was not able to establish the mysterious, mysterious mage's identity, he did learn that he had been traveling with Cirilla some time before, and the wild hunt was after him as well. <clears throat> 